Ogonofatu, and welcome young men, parents, and whanau. My name is Tausen Yuguayi, and I am the 2022 Head Prefect for Palms North Boys High School, and I would like to welcome you to our open day. Thank you to the OK Corral, our premier choir, for that performance to begin this information session. I would like to introduce the people sitting on the stage this morning. Director Mr. Bovey, College House Manager Mr. Davidson, Teacher in Charge of the Sports Development Program Mr. Davidson, Yay Dean Mr. Barwick, Head of Drama Ms. Kotia. These staff members will be available for you to talk to the, in the hall at the conclusion of this presentation. Also on stage are two year nine students, Chance Walker and Quinn Sherman. We will speak to you shortly about the experiences at Palmy Boys. The presentation will begin with the Rector, Mr. Bowman. Thank you, Chelsea, and uh, Kia Koto, and welcome along to our uh, school and our open day today. It's great to see so many of you here taking time out of your busy morning uh, today. So, for the young men in here, you're about to make an important decision, gentlemen. Uh, and it's a decision about the next five years of your education. And so today is about getting as much information as you can uh, about our school. And I'll talk in more detail about as aspects of the school shortly uh, before our two year nine pupils that uh, Kelsey introduced you, Quinn and Chance, will speak to you about their experiences so far here at Boys High. And the presentations in here will conclude with uh, Mr. Barwick, who will go through some of the minutiae of the enrolment process. If you do have questions about the sports development program, uh, then Mr. Davidson is the man to see. And then if there are questions about College House, even though we're full uh, at year nine for next year, the slightly more athletic Mr. Davidson uh, is the man to speak to. And we have uh, Mrs. Kutzia here this morning to talk to you about the performing arts programs. After the presentation here, you'll get the opportunity to have a look around the school. Uh, and unlike the sessions this evening, you'll get a chance to see the school in action so the boys will be working, uh, will hopefully working in their classes as you go around the school. So once we've finished in here, you'll be able to go over to the school hall and from there, there will be some young men who will be taking tour groups around the school. And I do encourage you to ask your tour guides questions. They'll be able to answer those differently to how the staff will answer them. They will give you the answers from their perspective. And I do certainly encourage you to ask as many questions as you like. There's no such thing as a dumb question because it's a new environment for you, so do ask as many questions as you can. Now, our school was established 120 years ago and tradition is important to us. And I know there are some who thumb their noses at tradition, but as Gustav Mahler once said, tradition is not the worship of ashes, it's the preservation of fire. So the traditions, the honourable traditions that we hold on to, uh, are are really important to us. We retain traditional values, we set clear expectations while providing opportunities uh, for our young men and your young men to succeed at a place that has as its primary aim developing young, uh, young men of outstanding character, educated men of outstanding character. Now that may sound like a lofty goal, but it is something we strive to achieve. And as the poet Robert Browning once said, a man's reach should exceed his grasp, or what's the heaven for? So as a school, we're aspirational, and we want each and every one of our young men to be aspirational as well. We want our boys, your boys, to aim high, to work hard, to achieve their goals inside and outside of the classroom. And what we do is we, we ask for those young men to aim to achieve to their potential. And we want them to earn and to deserve their success, and it won't just land in their lap. And to be able to do this, we start by having the right people on the bus in the right places. This begins with the quality of our teaching staff, uh, which numbers 116, as well as our non-teaching staff, all of whom work hard to ensure we're able to provide opportunities and support for our young men. And this is supported through the expectations we have of the young men in our care. And these expectations are clearly communicated to them and are absolutely essential in maintaining our school culture. So some may ask why a boys' school? We focus on what we believe works for boys, on how boys learn, and on the importance of an all-round education. Recent studies by the New Zealand Council of Educational Research and further independent research found that boys in boys' schools 
consistently achieve at a level above boys and co-ed schools at all levels of NCEA. The research findings also reveal that boys and boys schools have a significantly higher rate of achieving university entrance and of achieving NCA scholarships than those in co-ed schools. The same research showed that boys in co-ed schools are more than twice as likely to leave school with no formal academic qualification. Further independent research which analysed five years of achievement data from the last decade backs us up, revealing that boys and boys schools achieved higher academic results at every level of NCA, including the university entrance, regardless of decile level or ethnicity group. The research also indicated that qualifications in boys schools were more difficult to obtain as the programmes generally contain more external assessment and more academic rigour than in co-ed schools. And I know it seems a long way off to the young men in here to be talking about NCA, but before you know it, gentlemen, you'll be sitting down to do some NCA exams. It's often difficult to make comparisons between schools with NCA figures because there are so many uh, inaccuracies and, and one school's NCA qualification uh, can be distinctly different to another's. But what I can tell you is we're a, we're a school and we do not offer what's known as buffet credits or help yourself credits. We don't offer NCA credits for picking up rubbish and singing the school song, both of which, however, uh, are important, but perhaps not academically. And we saw that during the, uh, the recent lockdown periods, there were credits offered for doing the washing or making cups of tea at home, um, but I don't think that can be compared on any level to achieving credits in calculus or physics or history. And there has been, for some years now, continued tinkering with the system, and you may have read a little bit about the forthcoming NCA changes, and I think it's a system that still hasn't quite got it right, but it is a system that we have. But we also have to acknowledge that many of our young men uh, won't be heading towards university, and the trades in particular has seen a real growth in recent years, in particular at this school, our courses at the senior level, which include mechanical engineering, and we have young men building houses and classrooms, they've certainly grown. And in fact, we've got 161 recent old boys who are working or registered with the industry training organisations throughout the region. <coughs> but while the primary focus of any secondary edu education must be academic, it's not the whole picture. And we certainly place an emphasis on an all-round education. Our co-curricular programme is extensive and offers our young men plenty of opportunities to get involved in this important aspect of school life. And the same research that I mentioned earlier uh, indicates that this is another area of strength for board schools. One of the opportunities at the School for Year 9 and 10 pupils is the Sports Development Programme. And as I mentioned earlier, uh, we have a young Mr Davidson uh, who will be able to answer your questions in the hall once we have finished in here. But our school's not just for the top performers. Cultural and sporting activities are available for all levels of ability. What we emphasise is simply getting involved. Uh, this year we have more than 170 teams or cultural groups. 42 basketball teams, uh, 20 cricket teams, 16 rugby teams, over 100 young men playing uh, volleyball, badminton, table tennis. We have canoe polo, water polo. Uh, we've got small ball and play target shooting, plus a number of vocal and musical and performing arts groups. We have cultural groups such as the Kapahaka and Pacifica groups, who you'll be able to see this morning. We have junior musical theatre, junior bands. And each one of those teams has one of our 116 teachers with them. In fact, our numbers in these areas are up again for the second year in a row, which goes against the national trend. Now, we know there's sometimes a perception that boys' schools only care about sport, but you only have to see the sheer numbers of our young men who are involved in performing arts and cultural groups to understand that that's not the case here. And you've seen a bit of evidence with our OK Corral this morning who have again qualified for the national choral finals. And in fact, to give you a little bit more information on some of the cultural opportunities in the school, we have a short video presentation to show you now.
Kia ora. My name is Josh Strickland. Uh, I'm HOD of Te Reo Māori here at Palms North Boys High School. Hey whaka pakari ngā tamatāne kia pūra pūra tuawhiti means developing educated men of outstanding character. Our percentage of Māori students at Palmy Boys is increasing and we have been successful in breaking barriers in terms of maintaining our Māori tanga within a mainstream environment. Students can take part in a wide array of events, competitions and opportunities such as kapa haka, maurako, haka, ngā manu kōrero, ki orahi, the Pūhoro Science Programme and most importantly be immersed in the Māori language. It is extremely important for us as a school to include Fano in the community and their involvement of student success. For example, uh, we celebrate Matariki together as a time for new beginnings and to promote the Māori language. The Year 9 Haka Challenge is an integral part of who we are at Palmy Boys and it enforces the values of our school. We provide Te Reo Māori at all levels from Year 9 to Year 13 and Māori Performing Arts. The performance of the school haka at major school events such as our annual prize giving is a real highlight and the knowledge and performance of the haka in our school community continues to be strengthened each year. Ko te pai tāwhiti, whāia kia tata. Ko te pai tata, whakamaua kia tina. Seek out the horizon and cherish what you attain. Hi, I'm Chris Burton. I'm co-head of drama and director of the annual senior musical production here at Palms North Boys High School. Drama provides a necessary outlet for young men to explore themselves and experience situations vicariously through the characters they play. The dramatic performing arts have become a cornerstone of our school. Drama classes at every level allow young men to gain self-confidence and develop skills in critical thinking, collaboration and performance. We are very proud of our record in co-curricular activities. Whether it is junior musical theatre, junior play, theatre sports, the Rector's Men, or our flagship senior musical production with Palmerston North Girls High School, PNBHS Drama is proud to be leading the way in offering performing arts opportunities for young men. Hello, Lily. I am Dean of Pacifica Students at Palmerston North Boys High School. As a Pacifica mentor, my job is to empower our Pacifica students with knowledge and experiences so they are confident in their own skin to become educated men of outstanding character. Our Student Leadership Council meets regularly to discuss upcoming events of our Pacifica yearly journey. It is important to our staff involved in the Pacifica team that our Student Council's voice is heard and as Deans we facilitate their views to make their ideas possible. Our close links with Massey and Victoria Universities give our students opportunities to attend workshops once a term which focuses on goal setting, identity and the importance of NCEA. Our Pacifica young men are involved in a range of events and activities such as fundraising, matariki, Pacifica fusion, which includes categories of cinematography, wearable arts, speeches, essay submissions, debate, talent and cultural performance. Big Sing Regional Competition and the New Zealand Super 8 Cultural Festival. We have over 100 Pacifica students at Palmerston North Boys High School and our focus is creating a successful and loving environment where our Pacifica students are able to be themselves and flourish in the best way possible. As the African proverb says, it takes a village to raise a child and the bonds between our Pacifica students are extremely strong and they are providing constant support and encouragement to one another in what is a strong PB family environment. Hi, I'm Graham Young. I'm the head of music at Palmy Boys. The music department at Palmerston North Boys High School is founded on the ideas of inclusion and excellence. Doesn't matter where you start from musically, 
we're just there to help you move on to the next step. And there's lots of ways that you can be involved. You can either be in the classroom setup, or having lessons, or groups. Um, classwork tends to be really hands-on, and it goes through from year nine, where you can be involved in a concert band program, or in nine music studies, which is a bit more holistic, and that goes all the way through to NCEA. More than 200 students have lessons at school each week on a whole range of instruments, so it's whatever you can think of. Same sort of thing goes with groups. Uh, we have all sorts of things ranging from rock bands right through to choirs, uh, concert bands, and all sorts of classical ensembles. And in both of those ones you can either be involved just as someone who's starting out, or you can be in one of our top groups. So really, it's up to you just to get involved. So we want our girls to be involved. And not for us as the young men who if they don't make the top team, uh, they spit the dummy and stop playing or they stop getting involved in things. But it is competitive here. We often have hundreds of young men going for one particular team. And it's one of those things where the young men who come to the school may have been involved at a high level at their previous schools, but when they come here, they're one of 400 young men in year nine, and it is competitive. So we want them, the boys to enjoy themselves and to experience the benefits of being involved in co-curricular activities. Uh, recent research again has shown that the importance of having strong social connections and regular physical activity are two of the most important factors that protect against the development of mental health issues with adolescents. And we know uh, for a pretty tough couple of years around not just the country but around the world that that has become an issue that's been talked about um, regularly. Our school has also been part of a global study through the International Coalition of Boys' Schools on the importance of relational teaching for boys. Now you might have heard the phrase before that boys don't learn subjects, they learn teachers. And so the relational teachers uh, focus on building relationships with young men and often that builds outside of the classroom. That's why we believe it's incredibly important to have our teachers coaching and managing the teams and groups that are involved in. I know some schools prefer to get outside coaches in, but the relationships and the benefits of having our teaching staff involved with these teams and cultural and performing arts groups, uh, they certainly pay off inside the classroom. Now we know it's competitive, it's a competitive world and we encourage competitiveness because boys are inherent, inherently competitive themselves and we see that every day around the school grounds. Even if NCA does not encourage competition, we certainly do. So our young men will lose and they will fail. And even though today's society seems determined to try and rid the concept of failure from young people's life, it is part of life. It's not always going to be successful. And so we need to make sure that our young men are resilient, are resilient because a young man's response to failure will say a great deal about him and his character. So we do compete, we do strive for success, but it won't always happen. So we want our young men to be humble in victory and gracious in defeat. And sometimes that's not easy for teenage boys for whom the synapses haven't quite linked and they're very emotional from time to time. So we, are, we know and understand that teenage boys will make mistakes. And so those of you who are familiar with the work of Celia Lashley, in particular the work she did with teenage boys, you'll know that boys do dumb stuff quite often. And when you ask a young man why he has done that, he will tell you that he doesn't know. <laughs> now as a beginning teacher, I used to think that it was a throwaway line, but it is actually true. Young men will do something silly, and when you ask them why, they will actually have no idea why they've just done it. But hopefully they learn from their mistakes, and generally by the time they get through to year 12 and year 13, they've come out of the other side, they'll go through a period at home that Celia Lashley referred to as teenage, teenage monosyllabic neo-autism. But which, for those of us who are parents of teenage boys, will understand that when you ask them a question, you might get a grunt, or you might get a, oh, you're good. That's about it. They do tend to come out of it, so don't panic. For a couple of years, you might not get too much out of it. But while teenage boys are teenage boys, we don't accept poor behaviour and poor attitudes, and we'll do our very best to make sure that they understand the expectations here need to be met at all times. And while games such as Bull Rush have been banned from some school fields, that won't happen here. So you'll see games of Bull Rush or Scrag or League out on the fields, and you'll see injuries because sometimes boys choose to play games with boys who are bigger than them. 
But again, they learn to adjust to this through doing and making their own mistakes of this nature. And that's what boys do. It's so much of boys learning is physical. Those who ever thought physical distancing could even remotely work uh, after we came back from those first lockdowns, particularly in a boys' school, uh, or any school for that matter, were very optimistic because all the boys did when they saw their mates after a few months of being away were put them in headlocks, wrestle with them, jump on each other, cuddle each other, and that's what they do because for teenage boys it's far easier than actually talking. ICT is a compulsory subject, it's an abrupt subject change I understand, but we're talking about ICT here at school. In year 9, uh, the boys don't bring laptops. Uh, from year 10 we expect the boys to be able to bring laptops if they have them available at home, we're able to help them if they don't. But not in year 9. <coughs> Reading and writing and being able to talk to people are still cru crucial parts of education uh, and life. And we'll move forward when it comes to digital technology, but we'll do so in a deliberate and cautious manner. And I think the recent lockdown periods have shown the limitations of the whole digital learning platforms. And for me, there's too much of the interest new clothes syndrome when it comes to uh, digital learning. Uh, we believe it's a tool for teaching, it's not the be all and end all. And as I said, it's, it's uh, the limitations we certainly saw recently. Recent PISA results, an international testing organisation involved in education, noted that the best results for students come when teachers alone use devices, the worst when students alone use them. OECD research also points towards digital use only in moderation for pupils. Uh, for pupils who use digital devices, often achieving at a much lower level than those who use them only occasionally. That said, we're not Luddites, and in fact we were part of the pilot scheme for digital examinations, and gentlemen, don't get nervous, I'm talking about NCA uh, digital examinations, as opposed to the ones that make men of a certain age have blood run cold. The, I need to speak about the enrolment scheme as well, so that's an absolute requirement from the Ministry of Education, and that's been imposed on the school, as it is in most of the schools in the area. So what in the last five years we've been able to accept all of those who have applied in the enrolment period. In the last three years we had to limit the numbers coming in at year nine by declining out of zone enrolments after a certain date. We've reached capacity and with increasing pressure put on our facilities and a significant building program with one of our blocks next year, we've been forced to reduce our year nine numbers for next year. We had a huge year nine uh, this year, over 400, and so we need to reduce that a little bit this year. So while pupils who live in the zone will of course automatically be accepted, uh, we won't be able to guarantee out of zone enrolments, particularly if there are any enrolments outside the enrolment period. So in conclusion, this is a time when we have families and young men have to make a choice about their next few years of education. And it's an important choice, as I said right at the start. So I do encourage you to look at other schools and their open dates and to make a decision that is best for you, gentlemen. I'll not stand in front of you today and tell you that our school suits everyone, because it doesn't. Different schools suit different people. So you need to get as much information as you can when you're making your decision over the coming weeks. Yes, we expect our young men to have a haircut. Yes, we expect them not to wear jewellery. I don't think we can ever be accused of being ambiguous uh, on that account. So please take all of these things into account as you go through your decision-making process. If having long hair or an earring is that important to a young man, then this probably isn't the school for him. Our staff want to welcome young men next year in 2023 who want to do their best and who are prepared to buy into the ethos of the school and to become part of traditions and values that we as a school hold dear. We want young men who are proud to walk on the shoulders who have come before them at Palmy Boys and who are proud to become part of our whakapapa. So we have two Year 9 students to address you this morning and the first is Quinn and he'll be followed by Chance and both are sharing a snippet of their school life today and then they'll be followed by uh, Mr Barber who will go through some of the really exciting information that we need for enrolment processes. But once again, thank you for coming. Kia ora everyone, my name is Quinn Sherman, I was at Pinnons last year and my form class this year is 9 to 10. 
When our names were being read out on the first day, I was really nervous. Not for who would be in my class, but for who wouldn't. But I quickly realised that being in different classes to my friends wasn't, that wasn't the same as being dragged away from each other forever. I chose to come to Boys High because of the academic and sporting opportunities and because of sitting right here in this op same open night last year and finding Boys High is the right school for me. In the past two terms, I've been involved in many sporting opportunities, including being the captain of the Year 9 Specials Cricket Team and being involved in both cricket and basketball sports development programs. If you do get the chance to try for any of the five sports developments, definitely take the chance. It's worth giving a go. I found the structure and the environment of Climbing Boys to serve me well. I have great teachers who help me learn what I need to know and help me set goals for my future of learning, as well as meeting people from new backgrounds and places. Climbing Boys has something for everyone, from cultural to sport to performing arts to esports. There really is something for everyone which is a main factor of me choosing Palmy Boys. If I was to give you guys one piece of advice, it would be to take every opportunity you get. Sign up for anything when you get the chance, and try something new. You'll never know how far you can go. Thanks for coming down, and I hope to see most of your faces back here in 2023. Thanks. Kia ora everyone, I'm just going to do a mahi to introduce myself. Ko Charles to Pungawa, ko Tarano to Pumanga, ko Mano to Tukaawa, ko Rangitane to Iwi, ko Woko to Kifano, no reira te neko te katoa. So my name is Charles Walker, I went to Monterey last year and my full class this year is 9MG. So far my first couple of terms at Palmerston North Boys High has been really good. I've participated in sports for the school, and I have made a lot more friends along the way. Before I got to school, I was wondering if Palmy Boys was as strict as people say it was. And sure enough, that was my bias. <laughs> <laughs> when my name was called to see what form class I was in, I was kind of nervous because I thought I wouldn't know anyone. But honestly, I wasn't really listening, I was just trying to hear my name. However, when I got to my class, I actually knew like a quarter of the class, which was pretty good, and I quickly got to know my class. I have been involved in many sports this year. I'm in the under 40 B rugby team, which a couple of weeks ago I, put, I got put into that team. I've gone to Tauranga for Super Rates Cross Country, which I was lucky enough to make a team for, and many other sports. I like Boys High because it's giving kids like myself many opportunities to show what you can do, even if it's playing chess and learning a new language, or if you really want to play a sport that your last school didn't do, you will most likely be, to be able to do it here at Prime Years. And that's part of the reason why I chose it. That's it from me, everyone. Thanks for coming and have a great night. First of all, I'd like to extend a warm welcome to you all this, uh, this morning. It is fantastic to see parents here supporting their sons and making important decisions about their second school, secondary school career this year. A few brief comments I'd like to make in addition to the information contained in the online enrollment packs. The first question many parents and prospective students have are related to the placements of students into classes. Our deans and learning support staff obtain information from the entry tests in mathematics, literacy and reasoning, which all students sit once they are enrolled and come to the course last and accepted. This data is supplemented with feedback from contributing schools, parents and caregivers, so that information and decisions can be made around the class placements. Once the school year begins, those class placements are reviewed as students complete assessments and examinations. Please take a note of these dates. In particular, the 5th of September deadline for completing the online enrollments. 
It is our desire to accommodate all young men who wish to undertake the secondary school link with us. Unfortunately, we cannot always accept everyone, as the Rector has said, uh, with our potential numbers reducing next year. But ultimately, if you get your number, if you get your enrolment in before deadline date, your chance of getting in is far higher. Can I also put a plea to families within our zone to complete their applications in on time? We are currently beginning the process of interviewing and appointing teachers for 2023, and having accurate and timely information about student numbers means that we are able to appoint the very best teachers we can. Further information regarding testing, orientation evening will be communicated with you after we have received your confirmation and acceptance. If you require assistance completing the online enrolment, please contact the main office. We are more than happy to sit down with you and go through that with you. Please note that all young men who apply for the Schools to Family program will be given the opportunity to try. There is no pre-trial selection process for us. Further information about Council of Boys High School can be found on our website, Stratus, our learning management site, Facebook, Instagram and YouTube. We do encourage you to spend time finding out about us and other secondary school options in the city so you can make an informed decision about where you want to be next year. This concludes the formal part of the presentation. From here, please make your way to the school hall which you, which you walk past as you came into the Spear Centre. Inside the school, here, school hall will be HODs with the curriculum displays. Sports Development, Mr Davison, will be in there, Year 9 Dean and our learning support staff. Once you've had a look around in there, there is the opportunity and I highly recommend that you take the opportunity to get a tour today with a number of our senior students who will be guiding you around. It's a good opportunity for you guys to ask questions. They've now lived at this place for four, four years and an opportunity for you to, to ask them the ins and outs of how Council Course High School works. Um, should you not wish to have a tour, you're more than welcome to stay there and have a cup of tea and ask the teachers in there further questions and then you're free to go. What we'll do is we'll, when we leave, we'll come down the stairs and we'll park the two exit ways and we'll make our way back around to the hall. Thank you very much for coming this morning. Have a good day.